Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another art channel layout. Today I will be working with this lovely begonia stamp set. This is by Altenew and it is from their Build a Flower collection. The stamp set gives you the outline so you can stamp this and color it with your favorite mediums but if you like layering stamps then you get lots of layers for both the flower as well as the leaf and you get also some sentiments to go along for your cards. Now I'm going to show you the leaflet so you can get some ideas on how it looks when you stamp all the layers one on top of the other. And today I will be working on my uh, flower art journal. This is a project that I started last year and I never finished it. So every page has a different flower and uh, I am planning to make a different page for all the letters of the alphabet. So I have C, this is F and I have H and many more. Most of these pages are already on my YouTube channel as a tutorial. So uh, today the focal point is going to be that beautiful begonia flower, so I'm going to do some stamping first. I will be working with the layers, so I'm going to use my stamping flat from there. And I will not use the outline at all, I don't want to have those black lines today, so I'm just going to start with a solid stamp. This is a solid stamp, make sure that this is going to stamp nicely the first time by rubbing your palm on top of it or in this case I'm just using my stamp scrubber. This is great for cleaning up your stamps but also for preparing them when they are solid. So you can see now that it's not as clear as it was before, it looks kind of foggy and that's exactly the look that you want to get a nice solid impression. I decided that I will use two of those flowers for my focal point, so I'm going to turn the page and stamp this one more time. I am using pink diamond here. Now I'm going to lay on top the next layer. It's really easy to align. I'm going to close the door of my Misty and then stamp this time with pink alicious. This is a shade darker than the previous color and it's going to give all those petals and the shadows that we need. I'm going to turn the page and stamp one more time. Then I'm going to clean up my stamp and align the third layer. And this is also very easy to align, quite forgiving really. And finally I'm going to stamp with rubellite, this is the darkest color. I'm going to stamp it a couple of times because I absolutely love how the shadows bring this flower to life. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other flower. Now, although lo this looks bright and colorful, I am aiming for a very vintage looking page today. So I will show you later on how you can turn really bright colors into looking vintage. I am stamping the leaves as well and I'm going to stamp three of those. Now this leaf, just like the flower, has many layers, however I chose to go with a completely solid one and then on top I'm going to stamp one more, just for the shadows. I'm not going to use all of the layers. And the two colors I went with are Limeade, which is the lighter green, and Firefly to do the shadows. All Build the Flower stamp sets come together with matching dies, so I do have the matching dies. However, since I am planning to make an original page, I decided to cut out everything with my scissors. I really love fuzzy cutting and I don't mind cutting out things. So this way I will not have that white border around my images. Now that my focal points are ready, I'm going to put them aside and I will work on my page. This is 6x6 and I'm going to apply on top some tissue that has lovely writing. Now this is super old and it is discontinued, but you can get similar looks if you stamp with a text stamp or if uh, you use an old book page. So I'm going to use my matte medium and apply it all over my page and then stick on top the tissue paper. And I'm going to cover up the tissue paper as well just to make sure that everything is nicely set there. As my matte medium is drying on my page, I'm going to cover up completely all the cutouts here with matte medium just because I want to make sure that if I decide to work with my big brush markers later on, I can do that. Once my matte medium was dry, 
I used my scissors to cut off the excess uh, tissue paper and of course you can use your fingers, this is very thin. Depends on the look that you want really, on the edges. Now I'm going to apply some color on my background, for that I will dilute Distress Paint, you can use any acrylic paint for that, just because I don't want to cover up the text that I have on the background, I'm making sure that I dilute it with water so it doesn't going to cover up completely and it's not going to go opaque. So you see, depending on how much water I have on my brush, it is uh, kind of translucent in some areas and goes more opaque in others. Now, the brown color that I used is Vintage Photo, and now I'm going uh, with blue, which is Brook and China. This is definitely one of my favorite combinations that I go back to again and again when I'm going for a vintage looking uh, project. And I absolutely love the result. So I'm going to dry this out and once that uh, paint is completely dry I used my uh, blending tool and I will go around the edges to darken them up a bit. If you follow my videos you already know that I like to darken up the edges to create kind of a frame and I'm going to bring in black suit as well to darken up the edges even more. At this stage you can play around with your background, you can do some stamping on top, you can do stenciling if you like, you can add embossing paste. I decided to add just some black splashes. So this is um, black suit distress paint and I have diluted it with water to make it fluid. And acrylic paint or black gesso would do. And now check out how bright and colorful my flowers and leaves are. So you can use them as they are on a card or on another project. However, for this background I feel like they need to touch them up a little bit to distress them somehow. So I'm going all around them with uh, Vintage Photo, which is probably my most used uh, ink pad ever. And why not I'm going to deepen up the shadows with my big brush marker. The color that I'm using here, if you are wondering, is Indian Red, but for the same effect you can use any brownish big brush marker that you have. So I'm touching very lightly the darker areas on the petals, smudging it with my finger. This is going to give a vintage looking effect just because it's not as bright anymore and at the same time it's going to deepen up the shadows and bring the flower even more to life. It's really easy to know where to add the shadows because they are already there from the stamping. So I know exactly where to touch with my brush. And as I finish this flower you can see it in comparison with the one next to it. This really is dimensional. So I will repeat the same process on the other one. Now I'm going to play with a stencil, I've been having this stencil for a long time, it's like a year's old or maybe more. It is by Alte New and I never had a chance to use it, so today is the day. I'm working on um, craft cardstock and I'm applying on top vintage photo. I'm making sure to go outside of the stencil so that I get a nice edge there. And I'm not going to be super neat about uh, applying it all over the place. I'm only going to use just the part from this uh, stenciled image. So I'm going to place it back there. And now this time I'm going to go with a slightly darker brown ink. That's ground espresso. I'm not applying it all over the place. I'm just applying it here and there to have some depth and variation. And I will not end up with a super flat impression. Now I'm following the outside edge with my scissors and I will end up with a lovely wooden slice which I think it is a great backdrop for uh, both uh, art journaling as well as scrapbooking or your card making. This is a stencil that I absolutely love and you will see the final effect is going to look like the real thing. Now again I'm going over it with uh, Distress Oxide Ink, again with uh, Vintage Photo, but this time I'm using my blending brush, which is going to apply the ink lightly, as you can see, so I don't get as deep in, uh, areas as I did previously with a blending tool. 
Finally, on the edge I'm using black shoot to darken it up even more. And this is going to complete the look. Now, as you can see here, it really looks like a wooden slice. I'm going to add some glue at the back and stick it on my uh, background. For that I'm using my white glue, that's my Nouveau Deluxe, but of course you can use any type of glue, even your matte medium, it doesn't really matter. I will trim the excess and ink up the edges like I always do. So now I have an area where I can nest on top my flowers, I can play around a little bit to try and decide where I want this to go. And this is where I had the idea to use this piece of burlap, so I'm adding some double sided tape at the back. Making sure that it is nicely stuck there, I'm going to peel off the backing, and you can see that I have the adhesive there. And then I'm going to stick that on my page, I always like to have different textures on a page. When it comes to our journaling, it's all about the different layers, the visual texture, as well as the different materials that you can put together. And all these different elements take your page into the next level. Now I'm adding some highlights on top of my burlap and that's with uh, white gesso. I'm just dry brushing some on top of it. And then I'm going to stick the flowers and the leaves to create my little composition there. And you can see that I use all type of adhesives when it comes to art journaling. I may use my matte medium, sometimes I'm using foam tape like here when I want to pop my elements. Other times I'm using double sided tape, it really depends on what I'm sticking down and how strong I want the adhesive to be. And I have all those type of adhesive laying around on my table so I can grab any one depending on what I want to do. But really there is no uh, right or wrong as long as you can stick the different pieces together. So I'm going to stick down the leaves. And now for one of my favorite techniques, the highlighting. So here I'm using my white gel pen and I'm going all around the edges of the petals, adding some lines here and there. These are going to bring the flowers even more to life and I absolutely love that sketchy look that it gives. I'm going to do that for both the flowers as well as for the leaves. This is a page for my flower art journal where I create a different page for each letter of the alphabet. And this is B for begonias. So I'm going to uh, create a little uh, tag here. I just use my paper trimmer to cut it out and my scissors to create the fishtail at the bottom. I used again black suit and a vintage photo to distress my tag and now I am sticking on top the letter B that I have cut out from black cardstock and I'm also going to distress the edges. Now usually I print out from my computer the definition of the flower but this time I decided to go with these uh, different stickers that I found on my stash. So I'm just chopping different letters from a phrase to put together the word begonia. I absolutely love that look where you chop letters and it would be even better to make it out of different fonts. However, I'm just using one font here. So this year I'm bringing back this series and I will try to create a page for every letter and hopefully I will be able to find stamps for all the letters of the alphabet. So now I am uh, picking different phrases from this sticker book. So I picked one that says in the garden and another one that says fell in love with her at once. So it kind of makes sense. The whole thing reads begonia in the garden, fell in love with her at once. I absolutely love putting together different phrases from the stickers. You also saw that I used my punch to add the holes for my disc bound journal on the sides. And to stick my little tag, I'm using a combination of uh, liquid glue as well as foam tape. So at the top I have my Nouveau Deluxe glue, so it is flush with the uh, top of the page, but at the bottom it kind of lifts, so I have some dimension. Now I'm also going to bring in my white gel pen again. And if it doesn't work, I'm just starting it on my finger, you see it works like a charm. I will also use it around the phrases, and you can use a black uh, marker for that as well. I'm going to use my mini attacher and add a couple of staples there, just to add some extra elements. 
And when I'm making a page, I cannot stop. <laughs> I just have so much fun so I can keep adding and adding elements on top of it. So here I'm going to add just a few of those uh, clear bubbles. These are going to look like droplets on top of my flowers. And I'm going to finally call this page done and put it back into my art journal. Now this is a part of a blog hop as we celebrate this new Build a Flower release with Alt and New, so make sure to visit my blog and enter the giveaway. Here are some close-up photos of the project that I made for today. As always, down below you will find a full list of all the supplies that I used in this video. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and also leave me a comment. I make sure to read all of them. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.